Hello, my friends, and you are my friends. Welcome back into another foray into boating madness. Um, what we're going to talk about today is wiring up 1224, or what I refer to as heavy 12. Um, you can run what's called a perco switch that you can select battery one, battery two, both or off. Um, it's advisable to do that, but if you don't want to have to freaking spend the $40 or whatever the hell it is for a perco switch or a battery selector switch, I don't know what the hell they're getting for them on Amazon. Don't ask me because I would not purchase one of those. Um, anyway, um, let's get into heavy 12 because heavy 12 seems to be a thing that, uh, I've come across here in the past couple years that, uh, people that are wanting reserve capacity, they're wanting not to have to alter anything with the boat wiring to accommodate more capacity for their boats. Say they take it out at night a lot and they leave their running lights on and they walk away from the dock. This is a common occurrence that I, uh, 4th of July weekend is always a good one because people go out and watch the fireworks and stuff. And then the next day they want to go out on their boat and do some day drinking and hanging out at the boaters beach and whatnot and they can't do it because their boat's dead and i gotta hit them for a hundred bucks for a service call to go out and uh jump start their boat because they left their lights on um one thing that uh i recommend everybody doing if uh you don't want to run a perco switch is to run heavy 12 what heavy 12 is we're gonna foray over to the job board here for a moment and we're gonna show you what heavy 12 is okay because i'm doing it on this one yeah this guy ain't done yet <laughs> anyway heavy 12 you've got a battery You've got a positive and a negative. And then you've got a battery. And you've got a positive and a negative. What heavy 12 is, is your charging lines from your outboard come in from here. Here's your positive and then your negative comes over to here. What heavy 12 is, is you're basically making a jumper line from here, from your positive directly over to positive, your negative over to your negative. It still gives you 12 volts, but it gives you that reserve capacity of that extra battery. Um, guys that like to go fishing and listen to the radio or they have a ship to shore radio, they're uh, fans of this. Um, the other method of wiring that is common among your fishermen and things of that nature, we're going to erase this and do it all over again, is a 1224. Like, say you want to uh, run a 24-volt trolling motor. So, again, you have your battery, your positive, your negative, and then you have another battery, and you have your positive, and your negative okay it's series and the difference between series and parallel what i showed you previously was parallel wiring positive to positive negative to negative now what 24 volts gets you is you've got your wires coming in your positive and your negative your negative is going to hang out here because you're going to take your negative wire from this battery, run it over to here, and your negative wire from this battery and run it to the negative that's coming into the feed here. Okay, that gives you 24 volts. The other way that I had showed you previously is what I refer to as heavy 12. It gives you the reserve capacity. You cannot run this the way this schematic and this little bullshit thing I just drew on the board here, you cannot run that on a 12-volt system. 
okay, you're going to burn shit up. <laughs> Your CDI packs and everything like that do not accept that. So uh, what you come into with 24 volt is like your trolling motors. There's a uh, Minn Kota motor guide. All of them make 12, 24, and even sometimes 36. What 36 would be, 36 volts, would be battery, 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 positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative. You would have your wires coming in, your positive and your negative. Your negative from this would come over to here, bing, and then your positive or your negative to your positive here, your negative to your positive here. You're basically daisy chaining these batteries together. This is 12, this is 12, this is 12. Creates 36. But you're running your feed. Whatever the hell you got hooked up here is coming in positive on one battery, negative off your trailing battery. And your batteries are interconnected. Golf carts do it. Um, lots of things. Uh, heavy equipment does the same thing too. But uh, in the marine realm, trolling motors are wired up this way. Um, this tracker that I'm working on has a, a 1224 trolling motor on it that uh, it's selectable. Uh, I don't exactly know how that works. I've never really torn the control apart to look and see how they do that. But uh, yeah. But general everyday guys that are running pontoon boats or want to uh, sit out all night with their lights on, they either run the perco switch, which what that is, we'll, we'll draw another little shitty diagram here. You get battery, battery, positive, negative, or I'm sorry, Jesus. Learn how to draw, Heath. Positive, negative. Okay, a perco switch would be a switch up here. They're usually round or they're square. In this instance, we're going to do square. All right. Your incoming power from your motor. Okay. You've got positive up here, positive up here, and there would be another positive lead coming up in here with a switch that is selectable. You've got one position, two position, all or off. Okay. And then your negatives all go basically back to the engine to ground. All right. That would be a perco switch. It's still 12 volt. And you can run at heavy 12. You would select the all position, which... Uh, Guys with pontoon boats seem to like that perco switch option because they can run one battery or they can run the other battery or they can run heavy 12 and run both of them. But the instance with this over the heavy 12 that I showed you at the beginning is you can select one battery and it won't leave you stranded because you're only drawing juice off of one battery rather than the both. Okay, or, you know, when you get back to the dock, you click the position over to off and it kills all the juice and it doesn't draw anything. Nothing's coming off the batteries, so they're saved. I have uh, several customers that have this option. In uh, my opinion, that's the best way to go. It's with a perco switch, but others opt to do it cheaper and they just run heavy 12, which is basically what you would have here where it's drawn juice off of both batteries all right um i know the last video i promised you uh we would go over the pontoon boat that i acquired uh, or I, i'm sorry i'd uh, rigged the kicker motor up to well he just came and got that today so it's gone sorry <laughs> it's out of here um might post pictures of it who knows this one, I'm um, uh, 
Got the uh, rigging hooked up to the Suzuki today, and I'm not happy with the way that's running, so I'm going to redo that. Um, they would uh, gave the guy cables that were probably two foot too long, so I got to kind of fudge it and make them so they're not up on the casting platform of the back of the boat. Um, well, I'll take a gander here at that. But, uh, yeah. We got a big, huge loop here. And I'm going to try to eliminate that. I had uh, poked them through that grommet over there and it just ran them freely up here. But I think I'm going to run them underneath all that rigging for the uh, 150. So that way the bend is not quite so long. And uh, we can get rid of a lot of that and fudge a lot of that extra length. Um, Put the motor in that position because that is where there's going to be that much most the, the most amount of slack if we flip the motor the other way there ain't going to be that much slack but the fact that we got this much slack up where the floor goes and the casting platform and all that stuff that's eh, not real good and i'm not real happy with that so we're gonna we're gonna address that tomorrow but yeah it's still here um <laughs> i do work a full-time job so there's that. Um, I got his amp wires, his uh, wires for his uh, Suzuki hooked up there, down under there. I'm hooking that up heavy 12. That's uh, what he wanted. Um, and we're gonna delve into that. His control box up there is still sitting on the floor, but I did a pass through grommet on that thing there. Um, it passes under the main control box for the 150, which is right there. That's the kicker bracket. There's a cubby hole there. That, that box is going to be mounted over top of that. But really, there's no other place to put it. Because the box is so big, if he was to run this control, he would never get wide open throttle. I can't put it back here because of the fact he would re be reaching behind himself to operate that so the only available option is right there um other than that it's going along it's little shit detail oriented things at this point and uh been sweeping up more evidence of mice uh, so that's not good uh i do have to have a talk with him about that because i do not want to see this boat back in my shop with another infestation of mice because uh it went from his problem to my problem and uh i know the last video i think i said i caught 13 while i'm up to 18 now we're well over a baker's dozen and uh, every day i catch one um that's not normal and, and, you know, I walk in here, this place smells like mouse piss. So, again, with that, be mindful of where you're keeping your boats. Um, and with that, that's it for today. We'll uh, be back with another one here whenever I get this thing buttoned up and uh, show you the progress on it. Uh, sorry I didn't. Uh, I know I promised you the pontoon kicker installation, but it left here today. So, uh I hope he's happy, but uh, it might come back. I think I earned another customer with that one. So if it comes back, I'll do a little shitty camcorder iPhone hunk of shit on that one too. As always, you know the deal. Be good to each other. Do or do not. Choice is always yours. And above all, stay tuned, my friends. Thank you.